how to sculpt, ooh baby, how to sculpt. <laughs> Once again, thank you, Eli, for that jazzy How to Sculpt intro. Um, it's only the second video that's ever used it, so I think it's probably a good time to still thank him for it. Also, don't adjust your screen. It looks like a 1990s uh, PowerPoint presentation going on here. What you're seeing is part of the reason it took me so long to release part two of How to Sculpt Sc Stand a Gaunt. I can't say that. I invented it. I can't say it. Uh, this video is, um, I don't know what happened when I was recording it. It does get better in a second, but, you know, I just wanted to include this janky part to show you that the fifth member also affects me when I'm not streaming, and, uh, to make it clear why it took so long. I'm also not including the original audio because it sounds like bad, I don't know, techno music. So what you're seeing right here is my standard intro to a How to Sculpt video, reminding you that you can use green stuff on its own, or you can mix it with other putties. I cut my green stuff with epoxy sculpt. I find that it makes a really pleasing texture that has all of the benefits of both putties with none of the downsides. It doesn't affect the putty in any way, and it just makes your expensive green stuff go a little further because epoxy sculpt is cheaper. You can also use milliput in this way. I've heard people use magic sculpt. I haven't used magic sculpt myself, but it should work just like epoxy putty when mixing it together. The other element here is that you didn't see me do it, but I wet my fingers. Oh, there you go off screen with a little bit of water and just keep wetting your fingers so that the putty doesn't stick to them. You don't need a lot of water, just like a thin film so that the putty doesn't get all cut in your fingers. Oh, and just noting that when you are using epoxy sculpt, there is a little bit of film that comes off of it. Don't worry about that. That's another reason I keep dunking my fingers to wash that film off of them. Got a little crappy towel I use here to also get that wet, gross, well, it's not that bad, but epoxy kind of like uh, slip off my fingers or silt. So once you've got that putty well mixed into kind of like a uniform, here it's a light green. The next step is to grab your handy dandy tin of Nivea cream. Um, yes, I use Nivea cream. No, you don't have to wash your models after using it. Uh, sure, you can use Vaseline if you're gross. I'll actually get into this on my next video, which focuses exclusively on Nivea and why it's so good for to use with sculpting. But it's pretty much all the benefits of lubing up your tools when you're sculpting and none of the downsides of needing to wash your models or get extra oil off them or anything like that. So what I do is I take a little bit of the Nivea, I put it on the back of my hand here, just a little bit, don't need a lot, because you're not going to be putting very much on your tools. You're so you can see I'm taking one of my sculpting tools of choice, a Beal wax carver, spoon, elevator, whatever tool, and I just rubbed it a little bit through that Nivea. And you can't even see the white on the tool, but there's like a thin layer of oil on that metal tool, and that's literally all you need to keep green stuff from sticking to it. With my tool lubed up, my green stuff mixed, it's time to plan my uh, plan of attack for this model. So you can see there's some gaps left here from the pinning process, and I'm just gonna fill those in with some green stuff to kind of get some detail there, especially like in the groin area, uh, the one side of the rib cage there, or kind of the waist, where I've just kind of like plugged some holes with some um, placeholder putty. That's where we're going to be adding some detail. Not a lot of sculpting. And honestly, when you're sculpting, the easiest way to do it is to do most of the work with conversion and then do a little bit of sculpting just to tie all the pieces together. So that's what we're going to get into here. So I'm going to start with this Standigant neck. So we got this big old blob of green stuff here, and I'm just going to kind of push that into the void. You see my next favorite tool here, which is a silicone shaper. If you've not caught this in my other videos, um, these are absolutely amazing. They paint putty in the way that you would use a paintbrush to just paint acrylic um, paint. And yeah, I've got two different sizes here. This one's the, the bullet sized one. So that's uh, kind of a thicker one. And then when I get into the thinner places, I'll bring back that more tapered tool. Um, right now, I'm not worrying about the shape of the putty. I'm just kind of like a paintbrush, moving it into the places where it needs to be. Just think of this as kind of like the base layer that you would think of with sculpting. I'm um, just trying to get the base layer in the right points. And you see here I'm having some trouble getting in under the chin of the model. So I've switched over to my more pointed silicone shaper there to just kind of like blend it in there. And another amazing thing with using the green stuff mixed with epoxy sculpt is that green stuff is pretty elasticy, and and by mixing the epoxy sculpt in with it, it makes the putty a little softer and easier to paint into all these different areas. Um, just having, oh, I brought a metal tool in here to just kind of like clean up the, um, the surface, smooth it out a bit. And I think I've got a bit too much putty here. So I'm just trying to find ways to kind of like shove it in under the jaw or to cut some of it off. 
when you're t switching between the metal tools and the, the silicone tools here, it's just a matter of like how forceful you need to be with the putty. I think there I wanted to really jam it into the gap. So that's why I switched to the metal one because it has um, more resistance than those silicone tools, but you can essentially do it with the silicone tools as well. You can see I'm just gonna switch back to the silicone shaper to just kind of like smooth it out a bit more and kind of tuck the putty into the, the gaps as I see them. Um, honestly, I've said it before, but it's like a paintbrush. It's, it's really fun to use these tools to move the putty around. Um, I'd recommend getting higher quality ones. Don't buy $3 ones off Amazon. I've tested them, they're not good. Go for the Royal Sovereign, which can cost as much as $15 or $20 per shaper. But again, you're, these things are not gonna wear out unless you touch them to super glue. Don't put them anywhere near super glue. So yeah, it's really worth it to pay a little more for them. So here I'm bringing out the uh, Hydra sculpting tool because I'm having some trouble getting in under the chin and in behind that gun to push the extra putty through because I'm trying to fill the gap on the neck on the other side of the model as well. Um, and this Hydra sculpting tool is literally a nail that Hydra filed down um, and stuck it in the end of a paintbrush. And just because it's smaller, I can get into those small places. It has a rounded side to it, so it, it doesn't give any awkward, like harsh um, angles to the putty. And now I'm gonna try and get in there with my silicone shaper and even out that putty. Um, Got a little too much under the head there, and I want a little more on the side. I might actually have to add a little more here. Getting a pretty good shape on it now, getting the uh, the silicone shapers in there. And I think now I'm starting to get in a little bit of detail. You don't need a ton of detail on a neck. Uh, there isn't any like stamped repeated detail on Tyranid necks. Also, it's kind of hidden because it's behind that armor plate. It's in under the head, kind of behind the gun arm. So just like a suggestion of some lines running along the length of the neck from the shoulder up to the head, as if there's some stretched skin there. Um, yeah, a lot of this kind of filler sculpting work, don't worry about it because people are never going to see it. And if you obsess over it, you're just going to drive yourself batty. Um, and if you're wondering about a reference material, just look at another Gaunt, and that'll be a great way to see like what kind of structures you should be sculpting. Just making sure to fill all the gaps behind, um, not miss any parts of the neck here. I'm just going to switch up the focus. There we go. Now we can get a good look. So you can see it's just kind of like a quick and dirty fill job on this. Just getting in under the chin here, making sure that the flesh of the neck kind of lines up with the head. I see there's a little bit of a gap here between the head and the neck, so I'm going to need to get some putty up into that space. And checking out this other side, I think I'm going to need to add a little more putty here. It doesn't look like I have quite enough to fill the gaps that are that are left from the, um, the conversion job, so I'm just going to pull off a little more here and shove it in here on the right side so I have a little more to work with. And that's just a perfect illustration that I honestly don't know what I'm doing half the time. That A lot of this is organic. Um, I sometimes wind up with putting too much putty at first. So I've been trying to kind of dial back and then add more as I need it instead of winding up with too much right off the bat. And there's no damage to adding putty on. It'll stick to each other. Don't even think about the Nivea for a second. That doesn't keep the putty from sticking to itself because there's so little of that Nivea on your tool and so little gets transferred to the putty itself. So yeah, just uh, as you're going, be like, oh, I think I need a little more and add a little more there. So you'll see here, oh, it happens off screen, but I'm just uh, switching up a tool and getting a little more Nivea on it. You don't have to worry that much, but if you see the putty starting to stick a bit, you can just kind of like rejuvenate your Nivea. I keep it on the back of my hand because it's really close and easy to get to. Um, again, just switching up tools here to kind of get into different areas, uh, push the putty around, move it up. This one's nice because it has that edge on it. It's like a, a smaller spoon tool and it can it's easy to like lift the putty up into like kind of crevices with it. Uh, but now I'm trying to get more of that texture in there. There was a piece of neck that I preserved on the back here and I'm just following the lines of that and connecting them up uh, with the putty. Again, filling these gaps here. Looks like there's a little bit of a gap there where that piece of neck has a cavity behind it underneath the armor plates. And I'm definitely gonna wanna get in there with a little more putty to disguise that and fill it in. So just grab a little more of my putty here for filling that gap, not very much at all. Um, and just kind of plunk it in there between these armor plates and need to get a tool and just shove it in underneath there to, to fill that gap. 
So this is a fairly well tapered tool and it's easy to get it down in there. Again, I'm not worrying about the fine detail here because no one's ever gonna look at the back of this model. And when this thing's painted, all those armor plates are gonna distract from whatever's going on here with the putty, but I just can't have the gap there, so I need to fill it in. I'm just smoothing everything out here, blending the different uh, bits of putty that I've added to the model into one another so that there's no gaps between them. That is again made easier by mixing in the epoxy sculpt because it's so soft you have far fewer seams between one piece of putty and a new piece of putty when they're all soft it's pretty easy to blend them in together but the epoxy sculpt just makes it even easier to blend it here i'm having a bit of issue getting in behind this armor plate but just by switching up to smaller tools i'm able to do it here you also see me return to my bullet silicone shaper. Um, this one is special to me that uh, I've only ever seen these in Germany. Um, Hydra introduced me to them, and I've never been able to see one of this particular shape anywhere else. I've got a couple of them, so maybe we'll do a giveaway or something. But I just like how it's giving me a nice, thick um, groove on the neck here. And it's just perfect for smoothing out the putty here. And then I uh, just go in with the, the thinner one to make sure I'm not getting any putty on the back of the gun there. I'm just kind of cleaning up the back of the head here. Probably obsessing about this more than I need to, but so be it. Grabbing a little more putty to um, kind of fill in another gap that I noticed here. So here I'm starting to notice that I've kind of like smeared up some putty in... Um, between the neck and the armor plates. So I'm gonna grab a knife tool here to kind of clean that area out a bit um, and better define where I want this stuff and where I don't. So here I'm whipping out a new tool. This is a ball burnisher tool. Uh, tool. It's also known as like an embossing tool. It's got a little ball on the end of it. So I just lubed it up. And this is really useful for kind of like stippling in, um, I guess, craters in, um, in putty and this is a really cool structure that you see kind of on the wastes of tyranids like on uh, the wastes of warriors or whatever it's also a good thing to kind of like where the flesh connects into under the armor plate to kind of put that that um, crater in there and then i'm extending that crater into a ridge running up along the neck with the tapered silicone shaper and back to the ball burnisher here just kind of pushing that in, but these things can make really cool um, textures. I, I talk about them more in some of my earlier videos, uh, both my tools video and my um, like how to use the tools video. I show the different textures that can be done with a ball burnisher. And now I'm here on the other side with the ball burnisher doing that same kind of thing I did on the left side where I'm creating a trough in the, the flesh of the neck by just like stamping in the ball burnisher. And I'll probably smooth that out, but if you just stamp it like that, it leaves these really cool little craters that look like, um, tier like kind of like webbing or something like that. They're very good tiered structures if you're ever trying to fill an area. Um, using a ball burnisher to create a texture like that is really helpful. But of course, I'm gonna go in and kind of smooth them out a bit with that silicone shaper. So I'm pretty happy here with the textures that I've got on that right side that we're seeing now, but I really need to get more of that texture up on this left side. Again, I had added texture before, but as I realized I needed more putty, I kind of um, covered over those details. So I'm just going in and putting in those textures with that ball burnisher. Just getting a little more um, Nivea on it because it's sticking a little bit. Oh, this is a larger one. So I'm just using it to like roll in that crevice and then on either side, it makes those ridges that look like the stretched uh, flesh running up from the shoulder to the neck, kind of similar to what we achieved on the other side. Uh, here, I'm also going in under the jaw with the, oh, I'm just showing there that the, the particular tool I have, it has two different size balls on either end. So like a small ball and then a larger one. Um, that's pretty useful for when you got to switch them up. And I think I have two of these tools. Um, so I have four different ball sizes. And these are pretty cheap. I think you can get these in most, most art supply stores because they are tools that are used for embossing, like with gold leaf or whatever the heck. Um, and they can be used to, to punch in these craters. But if you lube them up enough, you can also just drag them along green stuff and they can be used to make like a, a, a valley. So next up, I think we're going to add some green stuff to the head because I attached this antenna to the side of the head and the wire sticking out. And then of course we gotta go and sculpt in some detail on the crotch. Now, I'm gonna do this all at once. 
I would tell you that if you're new to green stuff, if you're worried about this, if you're happy with the neck, stop here, put the model down, let it dry. Because what you're going to do is you're just going to shove your finger in something that you fit, just finished sculpting and be really frustrated by it um, and just ruin your work. So yeah, I would wait like at least two hours, maybe three hours before starting on the next part of your sculpting. However, because I don't want you to sit here and wait for two or three hours, we're just going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to YOLO it and hope that I don't shove my finger in stuff that I've just done. If you're a super keener, you just watched the other video, you just assembled this dude, um, and now you want to sculpt on him right away, the only thing I'd caution you is watch out for where we did that uh, super glue and baking soda on his pelvis, because you don't want to get a silicone shaper anywhere near super glue. It'll destroy your shaper. You can't recover it. You're going to have to buy a new one. Here, what I've realized is I've got too much putty, so I'm just reminding people that if you have extra putty like this, you want to save it for later. Uh, break it up into small pieces like this, put it in a small container, and then stick it into your freezer because that will stop the putty from further hardening, and then you can just pull it out of your freezer, defrost it with your fingers, and keep working with it. So here we go on the pelvis. Again, um, when sculpting this kind of stuff, the easiest way to do it is to look to another gaunt, look to the other side of the gaunt where the detail is still preserved to see what kind of stuff you're aiming for. Um, when converting this guy, we preserved his rib cage more or less on this side. Um, we may have cut some off, but I think it's hidden by the gun. Um, and yeah, we're just looking at the side there, and you can see those little ridges on the, the waist, and we're just going to try and preserve that uh, detail and, and imitate it on the other side of the model. So I'm just smoothing out the green stuff, making sure it's all shoved into the nice places. It's bulging out here at the back a bit. And I do need some extra putty here because I need to fill in that leg gap. So I'm just going to kind of pull this down um, towards that gap between the leg and the tail to fill that. And get it out of my way because it's actually too much in front and then not enough in the back. So just painting it around with those silicone shapers that make it so very pleasant to move around. Again, not worrying about the detail at this stage, just get the putty to where you need it, and then once you've got the putty filled in to the kind of like levels that you want it at all the different places, then you can worry about the detail. But looking at the left side here, there's not going to be a ton of detail here. Uh, on like gaunt hips, back of their legs, there's, there's nothing really here. So we're just mostly filling in the, um, filling in the gaps more than anything, and getting the putty at a good level that it doesn't look too bulgy or anything like that. And then just extending existing structures or lines through the putty so that it looks like a continuous model and it doesn't look like we chopped a big hunk out of it. So here I've realized that I don't have enough putty in the front so I'm just kind of like and I've got a little too much in under that second arm so I'm just moving it around bringing it down into the pelvis area to fill more of the gap there again just getting a little more Nivea onto my tools also I don't like how it's kind of um, overflowing the edge towards the right hand side um, and possibly burying the detail on that side. So yeah, just smoothing it out, moving it down where it needs to be, uh, making sure there isn't too much of it. Basically what I'm doing here is trying to get like the rough shape of the thorax, whatever pelvis, waist area um, with my volume of green stuff before I start adding the details, making sure there's not too much in one place, too little in another, uh, making sure that there's a, like a nice smooth um, curve curve, whatever, smooth angle coming down from the rib cage towards the pelvis, because uh, I don't want to get all my detail in there and then be like, oh crap, I need to go and carve some out because that will not go well. So yeah, just obsessively using different models, or sorry, different tools to achieve the, the rough shape of the area before I go in and get the details in. All right, I'm pretty happy with it now. So I'm getting out the ball burnisher and I'm starting to poke in some, some valleys and some stretched skin here. Um, if I look on this side, there's like these, these indents and ridges that start at the carapace and kind of radiate out towards the front of the model. So I'm starting with the smaller ball burnisher to get those, those placed. And I'm using the larger ball burnisher here to just make like a valley uh, running down the front of the model. Again, lubed it up with some Nivea, and I'm just rolling that ball down because it looks like there's this ridge that kind of divides the rib-like structures on the side from the front. Or at least that's what I'm going with because I think I've kind of obliterated 
that detail. And then using that Hydra tool, this is really great for doing uh, rib-like structures because it's got the rounded end and like the, the long... Um, oh, I'm actually using it like a ball burnisher here to stamp in some little divots into the putty. And let's see, yeah, just looking at the other side. Oh yeah, you can see there that there's like the two different um, valleys on the side of the model, like one closer to like its hip and then one closer to kind of its abdomen. So I'm just trying to replicate that with what I'm doing here. Doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, people are gonna be looking at this creature's face, they're gonna be looking at this creature's gun, um, the head. They're not gonna be looking carefully at like what's going on on his abdomen. But you just want to do enough of like an, a kind of tyranny looking structure there so that it doesn't jar the eye. So it doesn't look like it's just this smooth expanse of nothing. Also helpful when you're painting, right? Like more detail you sculpt in, the easier it's going to be to like wash this thing, dry brush this thing. If... So now I'm coming back in with that Hydra sculpting tool. And with the way it's lined up, it's really useful for doing these kind of like rib structures because I, I put the, the rounded end into the end of the where the the rib structures kind of connect into that connective piece or whatever and then the side of the tool is as i drag it through it's creating those valleys between the, the different rib structures um really great tool for that but you can do this with a ball burnisher of course small enough ball burnisher just plug it into those holes and then drag it out and it'll make those same um valleys and then i'm just emphasizing the valleys with this pointed uh silicone shaper here so coming over to the other side of the model, I'm just um, continuing on the detail that is there in the plastic and extending it into the green stuff so that it looks a little more seamless, the transition between the two parts. So here I'm going with the ball burnisher and defining the other end of these little, I need better <laughs> anatomy language, valleys between the rib structures. So I, I already did the, um, the end where they plug into that structure closer to like the the side of the model and now along the i don't know is it the septum i don't know the, the front of the model the rib structures need to plug into a, a similar structure at the front so i'm just using that ball to make dip like uh cavities or craters at the the front ends of those different um ribs or the, the gaps between those ribs and again going in and emphasizing it with the end of the hydra sculpting tool just because it's a kind of a rounded nail end. So what we're getting here is we're getting these the ribs on the left, the ribs on the right, and then a kind of ridge running down the, the front of the model. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't love this ridge. I don't think it looks that interesting, but whatever. Like I just said, no one's going to be looking at this part of the model. It's going to be pointing towards the table. It just needs to be good enough to fill in. So I don't want that structure to be flat, so I'm using just the, the tip of the silicone shaper here to make a, a ridge running down, uh, vertically down that kind of like flat, not a ridge, sorry, like a, a valley down the middle of that ridge, just to give it a little more detail so it's not just like flat and boring. Once again, going in with the silicone shaper and obsessively cleaning up these valleys that I've sculpted in. So here's a closer look at what we've accomplished here on both sides, and you can see that ridge running down the middle. You can see the, uh, the side detail here and that neck detail. A lot of sculpting is going and cleaning up stuff that you thought you were done, so I'm just going and cleaning up stuff here, making sure the, the edges are nice and sharp. Everything is where I want it, because you push on one side, it moves things from the other side. So here's just a quick survey of where we've gotten so far. So we've got that neck detail. We've started on the waist detail. Next, we're going to start it on the pelvis. So we need a little more putty. I'm just going to examine a warrior pelvis here, just to kind of remind myself how we want to do the structure on this one. And honestly, that's the easiest way. When you got to do stuff like this, have another Tyranid handy, have a look and see how it's handled on other nids and then just try to replicate that. So right here, we're going to be trying to replicate that um, warrior pelvis that we were just looking at there on that converted uh, lictor. So just needed a little more putty here to, to build up the structures. So I'm just going to work that in. Also using this opportunity to kind of bulk up the um, the pelvis structure underneath the legs and towards the tail um, and just kind of putting in some ridges here of stretch skin between the leg and the tail. Now I'm going to be now I'm going to be coming around the front side to uh, do that same connective tissue between the legs and the pelvis structure that we're going to sculpt. Again, probably we'll just put this detail in and then obliterate it. But what I did do is I filled in the leg on the, the right side of the screen um, because there was a bit of a gap there. So we added some green stuff. So here I'm just redefining those, making sure those ridges are well-defined. 
and just deciding how I'm going to blend them into the, the pelvis structure. You can see here that we're starting to have that kind of V, like soft V shape of the, I don't know what that is, is that a pelvic bone? I don't know. Coming down towards like the crotch, the groin of the, uh, the gaunt. Um, this is not a standard pose, obviously, for gaunts, hence the stand -a gaunt thing. So we don't tend to see this kind of thing on gaunts that much, but I'm kind of extrapolating from what I know about warriors and some shit I've seen about dinosaurs, maybe, kind of, sort of, and just kind of defining it as I go. Um, because YOLO, and at the end of the day, this is a gaunt, how much is it really worth? Shouldn't worry too much about the sculpting, just get a kind of rough structure there that isn't just smooth and boring and you're good to go. So coming in with that ball burnisher tool to further define these um, valleys between the ridges, uh, the taut skin stretched in towards the pelvis. Um, again, you could do this with a silicone shaper as well. It doesn't have to be the ball burnisher, but uh, I just like, they're really good for creating these valleys um, and also making the points where the tissue connects into something else. Um, one thing that's kind of wonky here is that on the top of that gaunt's leg is an armor plate. And if I really wanted to be extra, I would sculpt in an edge of that armor plate on that like interior side towards the creature's groin. But like I said, this is a gaunt and I don't want to bother. So I don't really bother here in adding that extra armor plate. I just focus on the stretched skin, the legs connecting the pelvis, and then the pelvic structure. So just smoothing out the skin towards the tail here, filling in those gaps. I've noticed that I need a bit more putty to fill the, the like kind of detailless area on the left side here. And here I notice I've added actually too much putty, so I'm cutting some of it away because we don't want them to be too bulgy. Um, oh, I guess I'm moving it forward so that I can use it in kind of a different space, but I don't want it back here behind the leg because this area is pretty taut and uh, slim. So I'm just moving it around the front so I can use it for the pelvis structure. And as I blob that forward, I've kind of covered over some of the, uh, the rib structures in the side and the waist of the gaunt. So I'm just redefining those here. And then I have to mesh this blob with that central um, ridge running um, down the front of the model. And yeah, just getting the, the texture back in there. Here, I'm just following the lines of the tail and trying to connect them forward to the leg because there's already some good lines to find there and I just have to extend them with the green stuff. So much of this kind of work with green stuff and so much of the, the green stuff work that I would suggest that you do when you're getting started is just bringing pieces together and um, unifying them with green stuff. So letting the pieces, the model components do most of the work for you and then just filling in the gaps. And then you can use the, the textures that are already there and just extend those textures or textures that you see on similar models and just imitate those textures. Like for example, there's three um, holes kind of on the tail there and I'm just gonna, later on I'm gonna add another hole alongside those three because there's kind of like a space there that needs some detail. And I'm like, oh, there's three holes, might as well be four. So yeah, just continuing them on so that it looks like it is in line with the design aesthetic of the rest of the model. So here I'm just trying to define like the various ridges and various like indentations because I've got kind of like a blob of green stuff on this left side that isn't really doing much. Well, I guess our right, the model's left. Um, isn't really doing much for me, so I just have to get some kind of detail in there, some kind of connective tissue, stretch tissue, to better define the volume and make it a little more interesting and less bland. Again, this is another place where you see the downside of sculpting everything all at once, because if I had uh, sculpted that waist section, gotten all those nice ridges in there, allowed that to dry, and then come back and do the the pelvis part after, I wouldn't have to keep going back and fixing the waist part when I glob more putty on, push it over, and wind up pushing over a detail that I was already happy with. So definitely the easiest way to sculpt with green stuff is to work in small areas. Get one small area to a point where you're very happy with it. Stop, wait at least two or three hours because that's how long it takes green stuff to set, and then come back and keep working on the model. Um, if not, like you could even wait like a day, like be like, okay, I'm happy with the sculpting today, move on to a different model, do a bit of sculpting on that model and come back to the model you were working on before the next day. That way you're saving your progress. Like you're not in danger of ruining progress that you were already happy with. Like I'm kind of doing here as I'm blobbing all kinds of stuff together and shifting earlier things. So yeah, do as I say, not as I do. But you know, for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to get it all done in one go. And also to kind of like show you like, how quickly um, it 
could be done, that you could convert one of these gaunts in like a couple hours. Um, I will check when this video is done, but I think that um, the sculpting portion, if I hadn't sped up the frames in between, it would take maybe about an hour, um, possibly a little less. So yeah, just wanted to show you that it can all be done at once. Um, you didn't have to do it all in these different stages, but I would recommend to you that if you want to have a less frustrating experience, do this all separately. Uh, do the neck, then let the neck set. Do the waist, let the waist set. Then go in and do the, the like pelvis leg area, let that set. Um, and you'll be happier for it because you won't be shoving your finger in something that you were previously happy with. Like I said, here I am coming in, putting in that fourth little divot there so it lines up with the rest of the divots on the tail and just kind of continues that texture along, uh, giving the suggestion that I didn't I didn't make anything up. This was always like this. This is exactly how a, a termagant is supposed to look. Here I'm just smoothing out these ridges because I keep messing with them, moving them around. Um, as I sculpt other details, so just got to come back and clean them up as I'm going through. So here I'm adding a third and fourth divot on this side so that they kind of are similar to what's on the other side. I mean, you're never going to see the two of them together, but, you know, it makes me happy that they're somewhat similar. And then just better defining the ridge underneath it. Again, I'm making a lot of this stuff up because gaunts aren't supposed to look like this, so just finding stuff that looks vaguely tyrannid in terms of structure and texture and just doing more of the same um and a, a, a good way to fill space is this kind of like stretched skin thing you don't actually see it a lot on tyranids but it works for tyranids um yeah it's it's not too bad and a lot of times when you're doing stuff like this you'll just be like pushing around the putty and you'll see a a texture that is already kind of showing up in the putty just from the way that you're pressing it and then you just can kind of run with it and push it into a shape that looks vaguely accurate for what you're trying to achieve. Again this is me just doing a bunch of obsessive cleanup um, just making thing putting things in like the exact kind of more the way that I, I foresee them um, catching little slips that I've made as I've been working on the model and trying to tie those up this is getting pretty close. If you look at a warrior model, it has kind of like a weird kind of like pelvic rib cage on top of like this stretch skin. Oh, key thing I forgot to mention between uh, the last step and this step, I let the putty cure so that I wouldn't be messing with all this stuff that I've sculpted everywhere else. I could just focus on sculpting this piece. We're going to add the little warrior style um, pelvis in this area. So we're just going to replicate the same kind of thing you'd see on a plastic Tyranid Warrior, but smaller. Uh, here's the example of one that I did on the um, Hive node earlier. Just how it looks down there. Um, again, I said you don't have to do this because um, they're gaunts, they're tiny, no one's going to see it. They're never going to look at the model that closely. But honestly, I was like, okay, let's finish this video. Let's just do a quick shot of the finished model. And then I looked at this guy and I'm like, that really is not that hard to do. And it does kind of make the model look a little nicer. So I'm going to do it. And key is I'm not going to use too much green stuff because I don't want it to be big and bulbous like he's wearing a diaper or something like that. Put it on there and then make that, that rough kind of triangular shape with a bulge in the middle. Line that uh, central like high part up with the the high part that we had running down the middle of the torso and then if you can line it up with the point down here i usually do it with like larger structures at the top and then they kind of get smaller as we go down moving the putty around to get the rough shape it's like a shield kind of shape that's what you're you're looking for not going all the way to the legs because you want to have a little space for that connective tissue to show through and just kind of curving it down at the bottom so that it's curving down towards the tail, cleaning up the sides a bit. Got a tool mark there, so I'm just smoothing it out. If you look at a warrior pelvis, it has these kind of uh, pieces that go up and around the hips. So if you can work those in, that's great. So I'm just trying to pull some putty higher to be able to make that happen. What I could have done is made this, instead of being like a triangle, made it like a Y with arms that wrapped around the hips. That would have been smart. While I'm doing this, I'm trying to make sure I'm not flattening the putty too much so this is just getting it in the right places and then i'll worry about what it looks like okay so that's more or less in the right places and now i gotta fix the shape 
So just getting a smooth surface first so that I can sculpt the detail in after. Again, spoon tool, Nivea, lube it up, smooth everything out. You can also use a silicone shaper for this if you don't have the spoon tool. Getting that shield shape pointing down towards the, the crotch area. Make sure I'm getting it nice on both sides. Got to reintroduce that kind of um, elevated portion in the middle. All right, I mostly got that shield shape. Just comparing it to my sample warrior to see how I feel about it. So when you look at the warrior one, you can see that it has kind of like a part that like sticks up here and a part that kind of like points down at the bottom and then the parts that go over the, the hips. So I'm trying to get that point at the top, just pushing in the putty at the sides to make it point up a bit. Again, gaunts, rank and file, cannon fodder. You don't have to be like too detail oriented. I'm just giving you the demonstration for it if you want to do this extra step. So once you're more or less happy with the shape of it, um, or once you're tired of sculpting it, as the case may be, what you want to do is you want to put in the depressions between the different like rib structures on the pelvis. So it's it's easier to sculpt these in, and then these ribs get defined by sculpting those in. So I usually leave the make the top one a little larger. Let's see how we did it here. Yeah, to do this, you get the point of your tool and you go in towards the middle. You can use this tool. You could use one of these, a ball burnisher. You could use something like the Hydra Sculpting Tool. Maybe that's what I'm going to use. So I lube it up with some uh, Nivea in the back of my hand. I just go in here and just come out to there. And then I go in here and I just follow it out, making that depression here, follow it out. And then what you want to do is get them get them to a point where you're happy with the way they look on one side and then um, duplicate them on the other side so that they line up. Just going to double check. Yeah, that's kind of how I did it. So you want to kind of smooth out those areas. Here I've, I've like boop, 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 like pressed a bunch with the sculpting tool. So I want to smooth that out. It, it can look like stretched skin when you, when you press a bunch like that, but I wasn't totally happy with it. So I'm smoothing it out a bit. Same thing in here. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four. So I gotta do the same four on the other side. So they line up. Get in there, smooth them a bit. What I'm just doing is I'm cleaning up the ends, like the, the part furthest from that, that central bit because it left a little bit of, like when I was pressing them, I just wanna clean up those so it looks like the ends of these are kind of like rounded rib ends. And the rest tucks under. Oh, that looked a little weird. Same thing on this side, clean up those, the ends of those cavities. I'm just kind of making this hip part swoop over a bit more. Um, on that dude, I went and I actually, um, so it wasn't just flat on top of this, I kind of ran a tool over it a bit to give it a, a little bit of a, kind of a texture on the rib, or like a bit of a depression running down the front of the rib. So yeah, that's like pretty much all you need to give a little more, uh, a little more detail to that um, pelvic section. Um, if you really want to be, you know, overachiever, if you look at the two pelvises together, you can see that on the, um, warrior one, there's like these semicircles where the ribs plug into that central piece. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm going to regret this, but if I had to do it, I would try to take a spoon tool and just do semicircles. Oh God, I'm already hating this. Maybe I'd use a knife tool. Because they're so small that it's it's tough. But you can kind of get them, the suggestion of them with that knife tool. And then you could come back with another sculpting tool and kind of 
push them in. Oh, I'm really not loving this. Anyway, yeah, you don't have to do that. But if you want to, you can try to do it like that. And of course, now I've done it on one side. I have to do it on the other side. Maybe I'll do it better this time. Let's see. See, even I fuck stuff up. All the time. I fuck stuff up all the time. Uh, you want to be obsessive, you could go in there and like fiddle around with this stuff. Try and clean it up. I think I'm just making it worse. That's how you sculpt a little pelvis piece. Uh, stop before this part because it gets messy. Unless you're feeling like a champ, then go ahead and do it. So the last thing to do is just like check that that vertical piece is more or less straight because as we've been poking on the left and right, it can shift a bit. I'm just making things worse. I'm gonna stop. That's another key thing to sculpting. Know when to stop. But like I said, no one's gonna ever see this piece, so who cares? Uh, so there's the finished dude. Thing I didn't demonstrate on uh, on video was sculpting this little bit here. Basically, there was a gap there, and I just I just filled it in with some putty, meshed it with his head. But you can see there's the neck that we sculpted earlier. Uh, all the connective tissue on the legs, nice and hardened. Um, the waist part that we added in, and then of course this new shiny pelvis piece that I'm not entirely happy with, but now I'm gonna go and obsess over it for like 20 minutes. Trying to clean it up, but you don't have to watch that, because uh, as I just said, you can choose to sculpt this or not, and when you're sculpting it, you're gonna stop when it's good. You're not gonna try and do the, the cut-in sections that mess it up like I did, because you're smart, not like me. Thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of this kind of sculpting tutorials and conversion tutorials, make sure to uh, like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'll be creating some more videos coming soon. The next video I'll be posting is about using Nivea as a lubricant and finally answering the question, do you have to wash your models after you lubricate them with Nivea? Spoiler alert, I don't think you do, but we're going to do a little test with some primer and some Nivea and we'll see how it goes. So yeah, you can watch out for that. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video or my other sculpting tutorials, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I have just set up Patreon recently. It is, there are no tiers. There's no like, you gotta pay this much to get this much. You can pay whatever you want. You can give me a dollar, give me two dollars, four dollars. Sculpting tutorials are still gonna be free on YouTube, but I'm gonna post some other fun stuff for my patrons. If you found my tutorials useful and you'd like to throw a couple of bucks my way, please consider signing on to Patreon. Thanks very much. And we'll see you next time.